Hi guys, Brain here, and welcome to today's video. I'm not going to waste too much of your time today because we have had two big whopping back-to-back -back updates drop one day after the other. I was going to make this video today talking about just the uh, dev update, but we actually got the upcoming live updates for the whole rest of 2024. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. First off, we're going to be talking about the fact that they're going to be changing scratch marks. If you've been playing Dead by Daylight for a little bit now, you've realized scratch marks have been kind of messed up uh, probably for over a year now at this point. They've been spawning late, uh, having trouble being seen. Thankfully, in a recent patch, they did decide to up the visibility of them by making them brighter. But the way they space and the way that they uh, spawn late is still definitely an issue. And that is something that they are apparently going to be uh, tackling. I'm going to bring this image over here from the actual dev update itself, showing that while the scratch marks in the left side seem to be spawning kind of like in a general direction of where the survivor went, it seems like they're spacing not only closer together, but also giving you a clear path of where the survivor has come from. So this is hopefully going to mitigate those awful issues we've been having lately with scratch marks spawning late and making it really, really hard to figure out where people are going. The next is the Midwich Elementary uh, update. Midwich is uh, infamously probably the most killer sided map in the game. There's not a whole lot of resources uh, to work with. And even uh, if you like it on killer, just because it's good for your role, uh, it's obviously a map that doesn't really have a lot of traversability. It's very hard to get from one place to the other. Uh, I'm sure if you've played here uh, on Legion, you've realized that while trying to go for extra chain hits, that if somebody's on the other floor and there's even a staircase in that corner uh you're just down your power which sucks <laughs> but uh midwich is actually having some changes happening to it uh they are going to be adding um line of sight blockers in the hallways but the big thing that you want to know about this update that's really really nice for both sides is that being that they are opening up the bathroom brick walls uh over in the bathroom section of the map so now there's going to be staircases at all four corners of the map uh so that biggest critique that midwich has that being that it's hard to traverse now there's going to be four staircases at every end of the map so the map is going to be better to traverse overall thankfully now we're going to be getting into the killer tweaks the first killer getting changes is doctor he's getting mostly minor changes here uh that being that his uh static blast cooldown is being reduced and this is not just a a flat update this is being based on range so it's 30 seconds of survivors are in range and also increased movement speed while charging his static blast which is his anti-chase uh, ability so doctor's getting mostly just minor adjustments doctor's kind of a middle of the road killer but usually one that a lot of people learn dead by daylight on so i understand not like turbo buffing him but making him just feel nicer to play that way all these people that flock to doctor can have a better time it's pretty nice the second killer we have is the nemesis and the nemesis is the one that's receiving uh, some pretty substantial changes nemesis is having a pretty big change that lowering his mutation rate uh, to get into tier two down to five contamination points when it was six. What does this mean? Uh, it, it, this means simply that you're going to be able to enter tier two off of three tentacle whips on the same survivor. Remember before you used to have to do three tentacle whips on one person and then go find a zombie or split pressure between two people. Uh, now you can just get all of your tier two from one chase, no add on required, which is really, really nice. Uh, also, he's getting a little extra lovely buff. Uh, one of the biggest things that makes Nemesis kind of frustrating is that you have to infect them first in order to actually have your power uh, which is just a time sink that you can't avoid and while they're not really doing away with that now the survivor is hindered for two full seconds after an initial infect meaning that you know you're not getting a damage state still but at least they're slowing down pretty substantially now so that's pretty cool now obviously the the add-ons are getting uh, adjusted that affect these as well with that being the most useless add-on in the game liquor tongue and also marvin's blood uh, marvin's blood has been a mainstay of nemesis mains for quite some time because it's just it's just free tier up why would you not take it um so hopefully we can have some add-on variety in this character and finally the character that is receiving the most updates and probably is going to be a a closest to like an actual like overhaul of the character that being the dredge the dredge infamously for quite some time has been in a weird spot because he's probably the most inconsistent character <laughs> in dead by daylight sometimes you'll be on a map like midwich and you feel like a god and other times you'll be on maps like rotten fields or yamoka residence and you just feel useless <laughs> and so trying to add some consistency to this character seems to be the goal of this uh, update which i appreciate a lot because that is kind of the most frustrating aspect of playing this killer so there's a lot of really, really great uh quality life updates like increased teleport speed or uh, uh reduced cooldown of the teleport itself uh outside of nightfall uh faster breakout of locker time like there's a lot of really really good uh, changes here the biggest one probably being another thing he's infamously made fun of for which is being that he is extremely loud despite being a stealth killer like he sounds like a giant vacuum cleaner <laughs> and so they're making him quieter so 
yeah, uh, a lot of much needed changes to hopefully make this character not as map reliant. Mostly dredge does come down to the fact that locker spawns are just inconsistent. That's something we need to probably address at some point. Um, but this will make him feel a little bit better, as, even when you get those maps where there's not a whole lot of locker availability. A lot of survivor perks that I have a little bit too high of a, of, a, of a cooldown between their uses are finally being adjusted. Uh, Dance with me, deception, diversion, woo, pebble gamers <laughs> are, are getting their adjustments. Uh, that way they can be used more often because uh, I feel like they behavior had this design philosophy for a while that they were afraid a lot of things would be too strong. So in response to that, they just kind of like went back and uh, added this really long cooldown to them before they hit live. Um, or change them at some point to have a long cooldown because they were afraid it would be too strong. But now they're going to be rolling that back because they realize that, hey, these perks, <laughs> not actually as helpful as we thought. So maybe you should have access to them more often. That's kind of just like a, a balance 101. If it's going to have a weak effect, have it be available more often. It's, if it has a really, really strong effect, make it not so available. That's just kind of how balancing goes. So they've realized these perks, fun, not too helpful though. So let's make them proc more often. I did notice uh, on the upcoming live updates uh, section that some of these perks have been removed. So I'm very intrigued as to why that is, because in the actual dev update, we have uh, wiretap on here and uh, flashbang, uh, which also get uh, their uh, cooldowns reduced uh, to the point where flashbang. Now you can get two without having to intentionally miss skill checks, which was a strat you had to do er, uh, previously in order to get more flashbangs. So I'm wondering if they walked that back or what the deal is with that, but they are noticeably absent from this overall roadmap. So I don't know if they just ran out of space or what, but that's kind of concerning. Finally, moving on from this month's updates, we have the Finish Ramori uh, Quality Life gameplay update coming through. This one still worries me uh, because while having a, a confirmed Mori, like a, basically a base kit Cypress at the end of every game, sounds super fun and super cool. Uh, there's a lot of hullabaloo and... Uh, hearsay going around that like Moris are just going to be dead <laughs> like our normal Moris like our Ebony's uh, like our Eerie and Green Moris are going to be just go going into like blood point conversion um, I, I feel like they talked about this at some point and unfortunately I can't I think it was in one of their live streams but I I don't want that TLDR <laughs> I don't want that TLDR I, I want to have access to our normal Moris on top of having a finisher Mori um, yeah, there's kind of no reason not to just have like a Cypress base kit as part of the game, especially if you're going to start like selling skins with Moris as they've already started doing. Um, it, it just makes it just doesn't make any sense to make Moris into a blood point offering. Uh, just just keep Moris. Moris are cool. Moris are a great part of the game. Um, just just make it to where we can bring both. Like it, I don't I don't understand this change, to be honest, but hopefully that's not the way they're going with that. Um, but I guess we'll see when that comes around. We're also getting more killer tweaks, which obviously we don't have the dev update for this yet, so we don't know what's going on here. This little group seems to be mostly based on characters that they want to nerf, it looks like, because he'll be obviously were extremely strong. Uh, some people are putting him as the best character in the game. I don't think that, but he's, a, he's at least top three, I would say, if not just top five. Um, Twins is also very, very strong. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how people willingly and, and consistently play Twins with the bugs that they still have uh, that have still continue to persist throughout the game um but hey they are very very strong uh when unhindered by those things so they're probably adjusting that skull merchant not while not like an a tier killer definitely just leaves a lot to be desired in the counterplay department and even when you start to learn the counterplay uh there's a lot of situations where skull merchant can kind of just force you into a lose-lose situation which is what frustrates people um so they're probably trying to take that away, make her a little bit more interactive. Unknown's the weird one here because Unknown is like a character design that almost everybody kind of universally loves. Uh, I'm not one of those people. I feel like I, I feel I, I put that in the, uh, the killer like tier list video, but like Unknown, I just kind of feel like unless you're dedicated to this character, it's just kind of frustrating to play them. But most people are like, Unknown's the best thing to ever happen. And I'm just like, cool, awesome. Good for you. Uh, but the fact that they're going to go back to the drawing board and change this character when a majority of people enjoy them seems odd. I kind of hope this is just like like what it says, where it's just kind of like minor changes, like what they did with like uh, some of these changes over here on the left, where it's just like doctor, where it's just like minor things, because people seem to love this character design. So don't mess with it too much. Perk updates down here seems to be for perks that <laughs> there's one on here that you hmm, <laughs> they needed it for a long time. The other ones are just seem to be uh, targeted at perks that just don't get a lot of usage because they just don't do enough to really justify the perk slot. Leverage, uh, anti-heal perk. Uh, healing has been buffed through the roof, uh, uh, especially last patch. Um, so uh, 
healing's really, really good. So especially with a perk like Leverage that is anti-heal perk that takes forever to get going, even when it does, it's not too great. Um, definitely probably needs a change. Uh, Hex crowd control, um, it's... It's there. <laughs> they, you mostly see lizards run on builds that are gimmicky, that are like, okay, uh, I'm running this alongside Blood Favor, so you can't use Pounce and you can't use Windows. But Blood Favor is like the bigger, cooler brother of uh, crowd control. Most people just run Blood Favor if they're gonna run something like this. So imagine this is a change to make this more appealing. Um, Blood Rush, obviously, also nobody uses. <laughs> so they're trying to make it something worth using. Distortion's the big elephant in the room. Um, Distortion is obviously the perk that encourages very ratty, very nasty gameplay and uh, often leads to the killer tunneling everybody else because they can't find you because you're hiding your aura all the time. And the fact that it also charges for hiding uh, encourages the gameplay even more. Uh, it counters most of the non-slowdown perks that survivor or killers would like willingly bring. So that encourages killers to bring more uh, slowdown over aura perks because they'll be discouraged to bring uh, their aura reading perks or add-ons because of distortion. Essentially, it just kind of creates unhealthy gameplay. <laughs> um, they might not gut the perk entirely. They may, may switch the recharge to something healthy uh, like chase or something like that. But I guess we'll see when it comes, but it definitely needs the change. Next, we're looking at the November perk tweets. Uh, we have uh, pharmacy, which is a weird one. I, I don't think... I, once again, we're already buffing healing through the roof. And we already have done that. Um, I don't think I want pharmacy to be better, <laughs> to be honest, because pharmacy is kind of a perk you don't really use too often um, because it just kind of like it. Besides the chest opening speed, which for like a gremlin build, like, I, I, I don't know. It's like you would be better off bringing one of the other really, really good healing perks. So we already have a ton of good healing perks, so I don't want it to also become another good healing perk. Um, but I guess that's coming. Uh, scene Partner, I don't know what they're tweaking about it because Scene Partner is just a really, really fun, hilarious perk that's already awesome to use because it's like one-sided object. Like, it's like, it's funny. It, 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 I, do they want Scene Partner to be good? I thought the point of running Scene Partner was to be a goofy goober, not to get value. <laughs> but dude, who knows? <laughs> I like running it, but who knows? Uh, and the big sad one that's coming is we have a two minutes being adjusted. Um, I don't know why it is, to be honest with you. Um, it's... It, it, I think it's more of just people being like distasteful of like Franklin's and Franklin's like adjacent add-ons and not necessarily weave attunement. I think we run into a bad uh, kind of um, environment here when it comes to Dead by Daylight. If we're going to be asking killers to not run slow down because that's really sweaty and ruins games, but also we're going to gut every single perk, well, all ultimate weapon. <laughs> we're going to ruin every single non slow down perk. That's actually good. Like you, you can't, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You could be like killers. You need to run less slow down, but we're going to take away everything else. That's not slow down. That's good. <laughs> like you can't do that at the same time. So uh, I hope what they do with this is something fun and cool, but it's probably just going to be an outright nerf. And then here comes Shadowborn, which I was harping on this when Shadowborn first got changed, because uh, now Shadowborn uh, used to be an FOV slider. Now we just have an FOV slider in the game naturally. Um, they, they, the, the, the replacement effect was, was garbage. <laughs> Not at all worth running at all. And generally, Wraith's teachables are all terrible. All three of them in a row. So uh, those perks need to do uh, something, <laughs> something helpful, something even slightly moderately consistent please and lastly these are some interesting ones for the killer tweaks uh plague is getting some tweaks which is uh interesting because i feel like she's a very very solid well thought out character i do hope that this just boils down to them finally starting to uh implement their uh like phobia filters because there are some people that really can't play against plague because of their fear of vomiting or just not even it's not, not even just a fear but some people like like the thing that makes them want to throw up is throwing up <laughs> so like um, they can't play against playing. Um, so hopefully it's something having to do with that and not really adjusting the character's kit. The the Cetabite's the weird one here. A really, really weird one. Because that's another one where I feel like like that character has a mostly complete kit. When I I I, I I'm friends with Field Agent Reaper, which is probably the, the best pinhead uh in the Dead by Daylight community. Uh the mod for his streams are there all the time. I don't ever really hear him say like this character needs big changes. Like this character it usually boils down to just this very slight thing. Um that's usually just a um, like a functionality situation like it's usually very minor stuff and it's only like every once in a while this guy this is not a character i think needs any sort of moderate changes at all so i'm hopefully they, they like i hope this isn't like a numbers thing on the back end where he has like a high kill rate or something and they're trying to like like uh 
adjust that. I, I don't know. I hope I hope I hope the changes to them are minor because I feel like they don't really need it. So yeah. Yeah, not only did we get a dev update yesterday, we also got the upcoming live updates for the rest of the year. So we know the roadmap of what's going on for the rest of 2024. What changes are you excited for? What changes are you scared about? Let me know down in the comments below. But that's gonna be it for today's video, friends. Thank you so much for watching. But if I do not see you tomorrow, I will see you when I see you. Goodbye.